Hi there folks, in today's demonstration I'm going to show you an autonomous agent that I've built in Copilot Studio. The purpose of the agent is to receive incoming requests for information and it will use its knowledge to then answer those questions and respond back to the user. This is a full end-to-end -end solution. I'm going to show you a demonstration and then we'll walk through how it's built. So kicking things off, I have an email as the end user. I'm going to send this request off to a share mailbox. It's my request for info share mailbox. And if I open up the Excel file, you can see it has a series of questions. Currently, there are five questions related to Copilot Studio. This is, of course, based on the agent's knowledge. So if you have a requirement to have knowledge based on a tender or an existing process, and you want users to be able to submit multiple questions and get those answers back, then this is for you. The other thing to note is, whilst I'm triggering this via email, and I'm just going to hit send right now, because this is autonomous, you can trigger this from when a file is uploaded into SharePoint. So this could be an internal process that calls your agent. It could be when a record is created in Dataverse or an item created in a list. Just because I'm doing this with an email doesn't mean this is what might necessarily be fit for your purpose. Now, if I jump across onto my other screen, I have the request for information mailbox open. And just like that, my request for information has arrived in my share mailbox containing that Excel file that has those five questions. Over on Copilot Studio, I have my agent and I'm going to go through this in a lot more detail. But for now, if I jump across into SharePoint, we can see that that file has now reached my SharePoint document library. And if I open up that file, currently we can see those five questions. But as if by magic, these questions are being answered by our autonomous agent. It's going through each question systematically one by one using the knowledge, looking up the answer, and populating that answer into the original Excel file right before our very eyes. So within a matter of a couple of minutes, we will hopefully get a reply back to our mailbox with those answers. And if we jump back across onto our original user's mailbox, we can see we have that response to our original request. And if I open up the Excel file, it has those original questions and of course all of those answers and you might be thinking can we configure the structure of those answers absolutely these are things that you can fine-tune as part of the build of your agent using natural language you describe it in plain English and you'll be able to format those answers based on your knowledge so let's go and jump across and see how I built this so we'll start things off from Copilot Studio this is my custom engine agent that I've built and the thing to point out really are the instructions. Very basic, but ultimately it allows the agent to use a topic to respond to all those questions. That's where most of the magic happens using generative answers and the knowledge that I have on my agent. And then I use a flow to reply to the original email that's been sent to pick up that updated Excel file that's been created and then send back a reply to that email. In terms of knowledge, you'll note that I have nothing in there. The reason there's nothing in there is because under settings, and this might change ever so slightly if you're an older version of Copilot Studio, this is the version that is about to release to everyone. There is an option to use information from the web, similar to use general knowledge. The general knowledge, of course, is based on training data that the language model has up to 2023. The use information from the web is live, what Bing can access via its search engine. So by enabling use information from web, my agent is able to answer a whole host of questions for this particular demonstration. But for those that have knowledge sources in SharePoint or on OneDrive or in Azure or in Dataverse or on public websites, you can add in your knowledge as required probably turn off that grounding, turn off that web search, and then you'll have an agent that's able to answer questions specifically about your data source. So with that in place, over onto topics, I have my RFI topic. And this is based on, of course, the requirement to perform an RFI. Now, I'm using the list rows present in the table. Of course, there is a prerequisite that the file that gets sent via email has a table in it and it's in a particular structure. There are some things on the inputs that are fixed, like the location, like the document library, but I do also pass across a file ID. 
The table is fixed at table one. It's worth noting that in order to populate the file ID, I have an input parameter on our trigger. So here we have under inputs of our trigger for that topic, a file ID to dynamically fill the best option. And it must be based on the user providing the file ID. Anywhere you see a description, you want to try and give as much information as possible because this is what's going to help your language model or your agent understand what it needs to do when it comes to not only use those input parameters, but also how to populate them. So at this point, we've got a file ID via an input parameter on the trigger. It's been passed into list rows present in the table. And then I do a bit of parsing, which is very much like you, what you might see in Power Automate at times. But I've provided a schema. In this case, I've gone to the from sample data. I've captured the schema from a flow for that list rows present in the table. I've passed it in here. It's created a schema for me based on the shape of the data that comes back from the list rows. And then I've saved that into a record variable. With that record variable, there just happens to be a table of all the rows. The table is called value. So I've set a variable called items to the topic dot questions, which of course is my questions record above dot value, which is the value that you normally see again over in Power Automate when you speak about the body value. This is the body value that contains all the row data for Excel. Then we have the ability to loop through a list. And because we now have a table of data, we can loop through each of these rows. And this is where I have used the create generative answers node to answer each of the individual questions that are in that Excel sheet. Now, the advantage of doing this versus just throwing all the answers at your agent in one go is this is going to use the knowledge source each and every time for each and every question. So there's going to be no context over one question from the next question, which means you should get the most accurate answer back mm -hmm. from your agent. It's only going to answer that question based on each and every turn. There is no memory between questions. Finally, I have an update a row. Again, fix things like the location, the document library. I'm, of course, using that file ID variable. Table one is fixed. And I have a question column, which when thinking about this, maybe an ID column would have been better. But based on the current question, it will look up that row in the table in Excel, and then it will populate the topic.ai response. What is the topic.ai response? Well, if I jump back into the create generative answers, I felt there was no need for the generative answers node to pass anything out onto the message pane because this is an autonomous agent. So into properties, I scrolled down to advance and I turned off send the message because I don't need the agent to send a message to the chat pane. And I've saved the response in this AI response string. So I'm able to use that AI response string within the update a row so that that full answer gets written back to Excel. That is all there is to the topic. It simply starts with a trigger on the topic. It grabs a file ID. It lists all the rows present in the table. We do a bit of parsing. We get the value array, which we see many times in Power Automate. We loop through that value array, creating a generative answer for each question that's asked. And then we update the row each question with the answer generated by generative answers. And then after that, based on our instructions, so after it's performed the RFI, it replies to the RFI. And that is based on a tool. And that tool is a flow. So the flow has a bit of customization. Again, this is where it's important to explain in the description the purpose. My description is pretty short and sweet, but based on the instructions, it knows that it needs to call this. And then I have those three input parameters that I've defined in a flow, which we'll look at shortly, the message ID, the status and the file ID. I just so happened to set the status to success. I did think about having failure, etc. But I'll save that for another day. Under the message ID, you can see the message ID to reply to, which is supplied as message ID. This is a very important that I keep the naming convention the same and we'll see this structure elsewhere in one of our flows. The same with file ID, you'll see the file ID to attach, which is supplied as file ID. 
So these are all the instructions for our generative orchestration. It will be able to populate those fields for us. And now we need to think about not only this flow, which is reply to RFI, but also the flow that triggers our agent autonomously. So again, jumping back to the overview tab, the autonomous flow is based on a trigger. So when a new email arrives, and it just so happens that I've got both of those flows open on separate tabs. So we'll start by looking at our trigger flow, which starts the autonomous agent process. So if I jump across to our autonomous flow that's triggered when a new email arrives in a shared mailbox, remember this can be when a file is uploaded into SharePoint, when a record is created in Dataverse, an item created in, in SharePoint. It could be a recurrence trigger. I have decided to do it when an email comes in and I am filtering for attachments based on an XLSX extension to make sure that I just get the Excel file. I do have a condition, which if there's no Excel file, I simply reply back and say, sorry, I can't help you. But if there is a file, I get the attachment, I create a copy of that file over on SharePoint, which is why we saw it on SharePoint, and then I'm sending a prompt across to our agent. And that's what then enables our agent to start performing that RFI and then calling our secondary flow to respond back to that RFI. So if I jump across onto Copilot Studio and have a look at the activity, I can load up one of the ones that's completed and we can see that when an email arrives, this is based on the trigger within that flow that I've just covered. It passes across an instruction to our agent, which then calls the RFI topic, which iterates over all those questions and updates the Excel file. And then we reply using the flow, which I'm about to explain shortly. But just before I do so, top right hand side here, if we go to transcript, we can see the message that I'm actually sending through to our agent, which is to perform an RFI on the following file, reply to the message ID, and I've passed the message ID there in quotes. That's all that's been sent to our autonomous agent in order for it to understand what to do based on the instructions that it has and the tool of being able to reply to an RFI. Just before I leave this autonomous flow, if we go into edit, I'll show you the all important action, which is the execute copilot action, which is also called send a prompt to the specified copilot for processing. But you can see the perform an RFI on the following file ID, reply to message ID. So that message we just saw in the activity tab is the message that I'm sending to my agent to trigger the autonomous process. And ultimately that's how autonomous agents work you're sending a message through to an agent, either as a new conversation, or if you happen to have the conversation ID, you can pass through the conversation ID and pick up where the agent left off. If you want to see a deep dive on autonomous agents, please do check out the video that I put out a couple of months ago, explaining some of these concepts and also some of the things you need to watch out for that might cause your agent not to work. So the final piece of the puzzle is the reply to RFI flow. And this is based on a call from the agent. It calls it when it's finished going through that Excel file. I get the trigger. I respond immediately to the agent. We can debate over this as much as we want to, but ultimately you have to respond back to the agent within 100 seconds, possibly 120. I might need to go and check the documents. But if you don't respond within that time period, your agent will respond with an error. I have inserted a two minute delay. For those that are experienced in using Excel, and maybe an Excel file wasn't the best for the demo, there are possible delays when updating a file, hence why I've put in a delay to make sure it's fully updated before I then get the file content. I get the original email because I need to get some details about it, like who the email is from and also the subject. And then I simply reply using the ID that the agent has provided me. If I go into edit, here's the trigger. It includes three input parameters. We looked at how those are described earlier in the video. And because the agent passes that information across, when it comes to getting the file content, I can use that file ID. When it comes to getting the email, I can use the message ID. And when it comes to replying, I'm able to get the file content from the get file content action. And I can use the from and the subject from the get email, which of course used the message ID. 
And that's how I built a full end-to-end -end autonomous agent using Copilot Studio and Flows. So I actually put out a post on LinkedIn earlier in the week, and one of the questions were, what if we're not sending in Excel files? What if these questions came in via email or came in an Excel file that wasn't structured with a table? Could the agent handle that? Absolutely. So I built it on the perfect world scenario where the file comes in containing a table, but if you were to use a prompt, a prompt of course is multimodal. If you're not sure what that means, I'll drop a link in for a video I did where I showed you how to build rock, paper, scissors, where you're able to see my fist or my scissors or my paper and convert that into structured data. The same applies here. If we pass in a file and we can provide a prompt that says to extract questions in a structured form, we could then pass those questions to our agent, similarly loop through them, answer each of those questions individually, and then save them to Dataverse, to a SharePoint list, to an Excel file, to a Word document. Again, I have a video of an agent writing to a Word file, creating an invoice. These sort of techniques can be applied based on your scenario. So if you have an agent that you're looking to build, not sure where to start, drop me a message in the comments below, ping me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear your use case, and maybe I can build out a wee demo for you and help you get on your way with your next AI agent. Thanks very much for watching and catch you again soon. Cheers.